obviously, we didn't keep the commandments. Huh? We out here walking on in darkness, not understanding who we are. Hey, sister right there, do you know who you are according to the Bible? Well, come along real quick. That, that's what I'm here for. I'm here for my brothers and my sisters to teach them who they are according to the Bible. Because a lot of people don't know that they have the greatest history on the face of the planet. Right. Somebody trying to give you something. Oh, thank you. Our history did not start when we went into slavery. Did you know that? We have history way before that. And I'm going to show you who you are according to the Bible. Go back to uh, Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Because you gave the best answer that you could give. Let me, let me ask you again. Do you know who you are according to the Bible? No. And that's the greatest answer that you could give. Because that shows that you have a humble spirit to be willing to learn. Because our history has been taken from us. Our nationality, our heritage, everything that we've known or ever needed to know about ourselves have been stripped from us. Right. And we've been given names like African American, Negro, Hispanic. We've been given by words. So now watch this. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. Bring it out. The ox knows his own ox. So an ox, an ox is a simple, dumb animal, right? But God says, as dumb as an ox is, he knows who his owner is. He knows who his God is. Read. And the ass, his master's crib. An ass is a donkey, a jackass. As stubborn as a donkey is, he knows where where his homeland is. Right. He knows where his master's crib is. Read. But Israel. But Israel, the Israelites, read, does not know. The Israelites don't know who they are. That's why when I asked you, who are you according to the Bible, and you said, I don't know, you just fulfilled this prophecy right here. Read it again. But Israel. But Israel. But the Israelites, read, does not know. The Israelites don't know who they are in these last days. Read. My people. God says what? My people. God says the Israelites are God's people. My people does not consider. My people don't even consider that they're the greatest people that walk the face of the earth. My people don't even consider that they're the Israelites. You see that God has a chosen people and they're called the Israelites. The 12 tribes in the nation of Israel. Look at this sign right here, sis. Do you see yourself on this sign? This side of the sign is what the so-called white man gave us. This side of the sign is what God gave us. Look on, look on this sign and see where you find yourself. Would you be considered an American black? Would you be considered a West Indian? Would you be considered a Haitian, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Dominican? Where would you, where do you find yourself? American black. So you would be of the tribe of Judah. That's right. Right. Do you know who came out of the tribe of Judah? The greatest man to ever walk the face of the earth came out of the tribe of Judah. Right. Jesus the Christ. Right. He comes out of your same tribe. I'm going to prove it to you. Give me that in Hebrews 7.14. Bring it out. Watch this. The book of Hebrews. The scriptures say, let all things be done to edification, meaning when you come out here to teach your people, give them the understanding of the Bible. Right. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 14. Uh huh. For it is evident. Meaning it is evident. This is the proof. Read. That our Lord. Who is our Lord? Jesus the Christ, right? Read. Sprang out of Judah. He sprang out of where? Out of Judah. Out of what? Out of Judah. <laughs> no, I don't, I, 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 I don't want that. I, I don't want that. I, I'm reading the Bible right now. Uh huh. That our Lord, that our Lord Jesus the Christ, sprang out of Judah. He sprang out of the tribe of Judah. That's you see right. that? This sign is what? Judah is black people, right? So now let's see if the Bible says the same thing. Give me Jeremiah 14 and 2. Bring it out. Let's see if this sign is accurate. Because the sign says that the tribe of Judah is black people, right? So now let's see what the Bible says. Bring it out. Give me the, Jeremiah 14 and 2. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 2. Read. Judah for them. So we're talking about the tribe of Judah, the same tribe that Jesus Christ comes from. Read. And the gates they are laid with. Uh-huh. They are black. They are what? They are black. They are what? They are black. Now if the Bible says the tribe
tribe of Judah is black. And if the Bible says that Christ is from the tribe of Judah, what does that make Christ? A black man. Right. Right. What, right. what do they teach us in these churches? They teach us in these tribe of Judah is black people. You are from the tribe of Judah, sisters. That's you right. are from the right. same tribe that Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, That's comes right. from. Right. So right. even knowing that, you got to start holding yourself to a higher standard. That's right. You got to right. start holding yourself to a higher decree as a person. Because we've been given... Uh, what do you call that? Low self-esteem as a people. Right. We don't give a damn about ourselves because we don't see nothing for ourselves. Our people don't know that Jesus Christ is a black man. Right. The greatest man to walk the face of the earth is from your lineage. That's right. Your bloodline is from a bloodline of kings and priests. That's right. So we got to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Teach us. Right. Teach. You see that? What did Christ teach us? Give me a... Uh, Give me the one where Christ said, sin not, sin no more. Let's the worst thing happen to you. Because Christ taught us not to sin. You know what sin is according to the Bible? What's sin according to the Bible? So you know that. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to let the Bible show you real quick. Give me, give me, hold that, give, hold that and give me 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. We're coming right back there. Because I'm going to show you what sin is according to the Bible. You know it, but I'm going to show you where it's at so you can show somebody else. The Read book that. of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Whosoever committeth sin, transgresseth also the law. So the topic is sin. Whoever commits sin is in transgression of the law, That's meaning right. it's breaking God's laws. Read. For sin is... For sin is... The transgression of the law. Transgress right. means to break. Right. For sin is the breaking of God's law. Right. So now go back to John where, where Christ said, uh, sin no more. The book of John, chapter 5 and verse 14. Uh -huh. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple uh -huh. and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. So Christ is going around healing people and doing, you know, great things for the people. He, now after he healed this man, he told him what? Sin no more. Sin no more. So Christ told the people to stop sinning. Stop breaking God's laws. Read. Lest a worse thing come unto thee. See that? Christ told the people sin no more. Stop breaking God's law. Right. Now do you know what law of God you're breaking right now? Because we're out here to teach our people according to the Bible. We're out here to lift the self-esteem of our people. We're out here to show our people that you are the greatest people upon the face of the earth. So you're not supposed to be walking out here the way these other nations walk. You're not supposed to carry yourself the way these other nations carry themselves. You come from a nation of kings and priests. You come from a nation of kings. So that must make you a princess if your fathers are kings. So in order to be a princess, you have to walk like a princess. Right, you got to right. carry yourself as a princess. Right. Which means you got to sin no more. Keep, start keeping God's law. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So it says the woman shall not wear which pertains to a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What's a woman's garment or article of clothing that God tells a man not to put on? A dress. Are you a smart sister? You know what I'm saying? You got some type of understanding. God tells a woman, I mean a man, don't put on a dress. So now go back to the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. So anything that pertains to a man, article of clothing that pertains to a man that our sisters wear today that God says don't put on. What is that talking about? Pants, shorts, because God tells a man don't put on dresses and skirts. So God tells a woman don't put on pants, shorts, and things of that nature because those things pertain to men. That's called cross-dressing. Cross-dressing is confusion in the eyes of God. Right. You see that? Now read it from the top. Read uh, what you got. What you got right there? God is not the author of confusion. Give me that. Give me God. Is, hold that because we're going there too. 
Forgive me, uh, God is not the author of confusion. The Book of Corinthians. First Corinthians, chapter 14 and verse 34. Yeah. It's going to be 14 and verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion. See, that cross-dressing is confusion. If I was to be, if I was standing here in a uh, miniskirt, would you take me serious? Hell no, because I'm confusing the people. I'm here teaching God's laws with a skirt on. Bring it out. That's confusion. Yeah. God says he's not the author of confusion. Right. God is a God of knowledge. God is a God of law. Right. God is a God of order, right. structure. Right. You see that? Go back. The book of Deuteronomy. 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Pants and shorts, read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Dresses and skirts. For all that do so. For all that do this thing, read. Are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. You know what an abomination is? An abomination is a filthy and disgusting creature in the eyes of the Most High God. That's right. Do you want to be looked at as an abomination to the creator of heaven and earth? That's why we come out here. Because a lot of our people don't know that. Right. A lot of our people are walking out here in darkness, not understanding that they are breaking God's law. And God is looking at our people as abominations. You see that as filthy and disgusting. You see that? So that's why we come out here to teach our sisters, come out of those pants, to teach our brothers, put away those dresses, put away those effeminate spirits, and come back to the laws of God. Right. Because that's where your strength is. That's right. Your strength is in the Lord. That's right. You leave from under the Lord, now you're in a base people. You're in a base people with low self-esteem. And, 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 and the oppressor is going to rule over you as long as you're in sin. That's right. You see that? So God says that you're an abomination unto him. When you dress that way, you see that? Now, give me the judgment for it real quick before we go back. Give me the judgment for women wearing pants and shorts and men wearing dresses and skirts when Christ returns. Because Christ is going to return to deliver us out of this captivity. Right. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which make up the children of Israel. That's right. You see that? You are one of God's chosen people, the children of Israel. Right. Brother, what's your nationality? Huh? But what is your father? And, and, and his father, and your grandfather, is he a black man? So then you also are the tribe of Judah. That's right. Of God's chosen people. Right. So this applies to you too. So now read, read, read the judgment for that though, for the sister. Are you, are, are you a so-called African-American? Okay, okay, hold on, stay right there because I'm dealing with the sister. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1 and verse 8. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass. Another future prophecy, it shall come to pass, read. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice. The day of the Lord's sacrifice is when Christ returns to destroy this place and to deliver the children of Israel, you blacks and Hispanics, read. That I will punish the princes. And the king's children. He said he will punish the princes and the king's children. We are the princes and the king's children. We are the children of kings. That's right. Read. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. You see that Christ is going to destroy all those that are clothed in strange apparel. Because it's a strange thing for a woman to be wearing pants and shorts. God. It's a strange thing for a man to be wearing a dress and a skirt. Give me Jeremiah 44 and verse 4. Because what, what did God say about the abominable thing? Because you remember, Christ said that all that do so in an abomination. You remember that, right? Okay, now watch what God says about the abominable thing. Read that. The book of Jeremiah chapter 44 and verse 4. How be it, I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. So we are the prophets. Come out here to teach our brothers and sisters how to get themselves right before Christ returns. Because once Christ returns and you ain't got right, it's too late. You're going to die. We don't want to see our brothers and sisters die. So we come out here to teach them what they do not know, what have been taken from them through their slavery. 
feet, raising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. God says, don't do the abominable thing that he hates. You see that? God hates that. God hates when our women are cross-dressed and our men are cross-dressed. Yes, God hates that thing. That's why he said he's going to kill you if you do not change by the time the black Messiah, Jesus Christ, returns. You see that? That's why we're here to warn the people. We're to give our people warning that destruction is coming. And we need to get ourselves right before it's too late. Now, how are our sisters supposed to dress according to the Bible? Read that. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. The Bible says adorn yourself, meaning put on modest apparel. Do you know what modest apparel means? Cover yourself up. Because when a woman walks out here like 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 how you're walk, walking out here, is a man thinking about marrying you? No. What's his first thought? Sex. His, first, his only thought is sex. Right. He not. You're supposed to be somebody's wife. You're supposed to be somebody that they can look at and say, I will marry this sister. You see what I'm saying? They're not looking at you for any type of marriage material. They're looking at you as how many positions can I get this sister in? That's all they're looking at you. They're looking at you as a whore. Who can I... How, how, how can I get in this sister's pants? They're supposed to be looking at you. They're not supposed to be looking at you like that. They're supposed to be saying, this is the daughter of Sarah. You see that? This is a marriageable sister. Marriage is the last thing on their mind when they see you dressed like that. That's why God says, adorn yourself in modest apparel. Teach us, meaning cover yourself up. I'm not supposed to see your thighs. I'm not supposed to see the shape of your butt. I'm not supposed to see your cleavage and all that. That's for your husband at home. You see that? That's what God says. Give me a, give me a Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 10. Because what you're wearing, God, God has, God calls that something. You see that? And we're going to see what God calls that according to the Bible. Because we're out here to get our people to change their ways. Because in the changing of your ways, that's showing forth repentance. Amen. So now get that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7 and verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. You know what a harlot is? A whore. God says you have all the attire of a whore. And you might not even be out here trying to sell yourself like that. But in, in, in these days, it's hard to tell, stand in the earth, I wear the pants around here. That means what? You're the ruler in the household. God says the man is supposed to be the head. That's confusion. You see that? We have to change our ways if, if, if we love God. Do you love God? So give me uh, 1 John chapter 2. Give me 1 John chapter 2. Give me 1 John chapter 2. The book of First John, you chapter two, and verse you in a temple. So one, two, and verse uh, three. That chapter two, and verse three. And hereby we do know that we know him. So God says, "This is how you know that you know him. This is how you know that you love him." Read. If we keep his commandments, if we keep his commandments, we have to apply God's law, statutes, and commandments to say that you know God. You know what I'm saying? So if you truly believe in the Most High God, you're going to keep his commandments as who you are in the Bible. Now, according to the Bible, who are you according to the Bible? Huh? You're from the tribe of Judah, of the nation of Israel. You see that? Now watch this. How do we get over here to America? How did our people get here? I want him. Brother, you want what? What do you want? How did you, how do we get over here as a nation of people? Well, I want and slavery. And did they did they fly us over here? You want how black. How did they get us here? On slave ship. Did you know that's in the Bible? Did you know it's coming over you here? You want black. I want Bible? him. You see that the Bible is our history book. And they would be teaching black history in our schools. They would have to teach the Bible. 
They would have to teach us who we are according to the Bible. I'm going to show you that slave ships is in the Bible. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 28, 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter tw 28, and verse 68. This is madness. We got brothers out here in skirts and dresses. God says that's confusion, brother. You got on a dang old skirt. Say, read what you got. And just be what you want. The book of Deuteronomy. We read that law. Man, we just read that law. God said, no, poor man, don't put on no dress and no skirt. A man just walked by in a dress and a skirt. Our people have gone mad. That's right. Our people have lost all sense of understanding. Don't got no care for ourselves as a nation of people. We're walking on out here in darkness. We don't give a damn about ourselves. God is going to judge those. Oh, that right That's there, you're looking at, like, That's he's a, a prince, the Lord has come out a king, a leader, teacher, a fucking God, teacher. Teacher. Like the fucking God. Israelite. That's it. Read what you got. I'm going to show you slave ships in the Bible. The Read. book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So now, if you know anything about the Bible, when he said he would bring us into Egypt again, we walked, we walked into Egypt as a nation and we walked out of Egypt as a nation, correct? So now read that part again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. So now we got to figure out what Egypt means. Because he said he would take us to Egypt again with ships. We didn't need a ship to walk in and out of uh, literal Egypt, correct? Now watch this. So that's not talking about literal Egypt. Read what you got. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So what does Egypt mean? Huh? Read it again. Listen closely. I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. So what does Egypt mean? The house of bondage. Bondage is another word for what? Slavery. Bondage, when you put something in bondage, you're locking them up, you're chaining them down. Bondage is another word for slavery. Right. So Egypt is synonymous with slavery. It's another word for slavery. So now go back to Deuteronomy 28, 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Into slavery. Again. Again. With ships. With what? With ships. With ships. Where's that sign at? So he said he would bring us into slavery again on slave ships. Who came over here on slave ships? We did. So what is the Bible showing you? That you're the Israelites. Because who did Moses say this to? This is Moses speaking. This is the book of Deuteronomy 28 and 68. So now let's go to Deuteronomy, the same book, chapter 1 and verse 1, to see who he's talking to. Go to, go to Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Because who came over here on slave ships again? We did, right? Right, so now let's see who Moses is talking to. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So he told the Israelites you would go into slavery on slave ships That's if right. you break God's law. Right. You see that? These are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. The tribe of Judah is one of the tribes of the nation of Israel. He told all Israel that you would go into slavery if you don't keep God's law. Right. So what does that make you? What, what, what nationality does that make you? What, read it again. Let's go to Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Let's see if Moses was speaking to Africans. Read it again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. Listen good, sis, because a lot of people think they were Africans. But listen good. Listen closely. Bring it out. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Did he say he was speaking to Africans? He was speaking to the Israelites. You see that? He was speaking to all Israel. So what does that make you if, if, if 
Moses said you would go into slavery on slave ships, and we got over here on slave ships. What does that make you? It makes you an Israelite. That's right. It makes you the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. Okay, okay, one, one, one more, one more. Go back to the Romans 28, 68. Because we got to, we, what, what we got to do is, is, is make time for the Most High God. That's right. You see that? Because in making time for the Most High God, you're going to learn who you are. And in learning who you are, you're, you're going to save your salvation. Right. You're not going to walk around, you're not going to walk around in darkness. Right. You see that? You're actually going to get have a chance to make the kingdom of heaven. Right. That's right. You should care about your salvation, my brother. Right. Read that again. And the Lord, excuse me, Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With slave ships, read. By the way where I spake unto thee. The same way I'm telling you is going to happen. That's how it happens. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. Your homeland. You'll see it no more again. Now, a lot of people think our homeland is Africa. Just because we were taken from the shores of West Africa does not mean we're from Africa. We actually fled into Africa fleeing Roman persecution in 70 AD. Right. We fled there from Jerusalem, right. our homeland. Right. Give, watch, I'm going to show you. Give me uh, Ephesians 4, 26. The Galatians. book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 26. Yeah. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Uh-huh. Which is the mother of us all. You see that right. Jerusalem is the motherland. Right. Jerusalem is our homeland. Bring it out, huh? Not Africa. We were taught by the white man that we're African. That's right. They want us to think that we're African. Because if we if we learn that we're the children of Israel and we come back to God's laws, the white man's time is up. That's right. That's right. God is going to destroy them and lift us back up. That's why we come out here to teach our people who they are according to the Bible. Because it's not until we wake up that God is going to send Christ back to deliver us from under the hands of the white man. That's why we come out here to teach our people. You see that? Last scripture, Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. And then I'm going to let you go. Because now that you know you're an Israelite, there's something that the Lord requires of you. What does it mean? What is the requirement? Something that you have to do. Something that you have to do. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel. Because you do understand that you're an Israelite, right? You understand that you're not an African. Because Africans did not sell Africans. Africans and Arabs sold the children of Israel to the right. white man. That's right. And that history is in the Bible, too. You just ain't got too much time. I will read it to you, but you ain't got too much time. The brother trying to rush you up out of here. But I got to give you the understanding of the Bible of what you can take with you. And then you can continue to search out the rest of your own because you got the flyer. And there's a website on that flyer where we teach free online classes. Okay, uh, 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 read what you got. And there is, well, what does the Lord that God require of thee? So now God requires of you something now that you know you're an Israelite. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. So you got to fear the Lord thy God. And it, it's going to explain to you what that means as we read down. Read. To walk in all his ways. To walk in all the ways of God. Because up until now, we was walking in the ways of our own imagination. We was walking in the ways of what we've seen on TV. We was walking in the ways of all these other nations. But God says to walk in all his ways. And it's going to explain what that is as we read down. Read. And to love him. And to love him. Do you know how to love God? Do you know what it means to love God? Get that real quick. We're going to read it real quick because I want to finish that scripture. So I didn't, I'm going to let you go. Because you got to know what it means to love God. Because if you love God, you got to know what, how, how God wants to be loved. So if somebody loves you, they got to love you how you want to be loved in order to feel loved, right? So God has a way that he wants to be loved. Read what you got. For this, excuse me, 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. Read. That we keep his commandments. See that? Keeping the commandments is how you show that you love God. So when we bring out a law as in wearing pants and dressing modestly, if you love God, you're going to conform to what the Bible says. Right. You understand? So now go back. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, and verse 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? 
but to fear the Lord thy God, Come on. to walk in all his ways, uh -huh. to love him. And to love him, read. And to serve the Lord thy God. And to serve him. All, all of these things mean the same thing as we're going to figure out as we read down. Read. To serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all your heart. Your heart is the mind, according to Mark 7 and 21. Read. And with all thy soul. Uh -huh. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. To what? To keep the commandments of the the Lord. So fearing God, loving God, serving God means all means what? Huh? It, to love him, to fear him, to serve him. It all means what? To do what? To keep the commandments. That's, That's right. You see that? That's right. All of that means the same thing. To keep his commandments. That's That's right. Right. In his law, statutes, and commandments were only given to you black and Spanish and Native Americans, right. which are the Israelites. Yes. Shalom, Israel. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.